We are really proud the University of Toledo is being recognized by the APLU for the impact our interdisciplinary water task force has had on improving lives in our Northwest Ohio community. There are a half a million people in our region who depend on Lake Erie for their drinking water, and the efforts of our researchers is important to make sure it is safe today and remains so for many years to come. Rather than have us tell you about our work to combat harmful algal blooms, invasive species, and other issues that threaten our water sources, we wanted to show you. The Lake Erie algal bloom. Toledo residents upset over the toxic lake. Toledo, one of the state's largest cities. Hundreds of thousands of people without tap water over the weekend. When I took over the job as director of public utilities four months before the 2014 Do Not Drink Advisory, when that drink advisory happened, one of the first contacts I got was from Dr. Calzanetti at the University of Toledo saying, hey, we want to help. So uh, the Water Task Force immediately sprung into action and they brought all of the resources of the University of Toledo to the table to help the city of Toledo get past this crisis. So uh, we are very thankful for that. For eight years and counting, the University of Toledo Water Task Force has focused its expertise to ensure the health of Lake Erie and the public. The prime focus, harmful algal blooms and the toxic algae they can produce called microcystin. It's Lake Erie's environmental menace and a worldwide problem. Made up of 30 faculty members, the task force brings together scientists, engineers, medical researchers, and public health and legal experts to collaborate closely to advance ways to improve water quality and inform stakeholders about their latest research findings. The University of Toledo has been uh, an amazing partner when it comes to water quality, water safety issues within inside of Lucas County and really the region when you think about it. You know, locally, uh, when we had the water crisis, uh, I, I utilized UT's expertise to help out with some of the questions that I had as the Director of Environmental Health. And it just continued on with the, the HAB crisis that we've had. Uh, and then, you know, moving into um, COVID and sampling of, of sewage and some of the issues that we've had there. At that time, I thought algae were plants. It turns out they're not. They're photosynthesizing bacteria. Um, I think like a lot of people, we didn't know much about the toxin at that time either. Um, so a lot of us started looking um, into the structure of the toxin. We really started diving into questions about why do those cyanobacteria produce the toxin? What does the toxin do? Um, how can we remove it from the water? How can we safely remove it from the water? Uh, we've done numerous research projects along with the University of Toledo uh, for our filter system. We completely changed our, the way we filter water here. We went to a bi biologically active filter system and the University of Toledo was integral in us developing that new filter system for how we treat water here at College Park. Building a system to use good bacteria to kill bad bacteria was one of the major enhancements, infrastructure that can now be replicated internationally. City of Toledo became the uh, kind of frontliner. So we are leading the uh, state of Ohio as well. So we are leading the harmful algal bloom research. And then all the outcome can be implemented to the other utilities around the world. U Toledo has an important role in the statewide effort to find solutions formed in the aftermath of the 2014 Toledo water crisis. Along with Ohio State University, U Toledo leads the Ohio Harmful Algal Bloom Research Initiative managed by Ohio Sea Grant. Early detection is key. In the lake, U Toledo monitors algal blooms and sounds the early warning from the research vessel. We're taking measurements of the lake and that has a direct effect on our drinking water because if we see anything out there, if we see any toxins or a, a large amount of toxic algae, I'll be on the phone to the water utilities at that, that same day. and They'll have a better idea what's coming towards them and how to treat it. We now know more about the effects of toxic algae on people with pre-existing conditions. Plus, the medical experts are collaborating with other Utilito investigators to develop new diagnostic testing for microcystin exposure. Uh, most of the studies that have been done so far have been done in normal, healthy uh, um, uh, settings, and, uh, but not everyone is uh, healthy. Over the years, the city has called on trusted Utilito experts to address the media and inform the public. There's a, a, a disconnect between the 
uh, the algae, the harmful algae that we hear about, that we see, and the toxins that the algae produce, or the, the cyanobacteria. Uh, so it's important to distinguish those two just because you have uh, harmful algal blooms uh, and have the, the uh, microcystis uh, cyanobacteria does not mean that they are producing toxin, that they have released toxin, that there is toxin. Due to its location on the shores of the Great Lakes, the Utilito College of Law has hosted the Great Lakes Water Conference for more than 20 years, addressing everything from toxic algae to the Flint water crisis. Sometimes short-sighted decisions that look like they are money savers actually turn out to be terrible money losers in the end uh, to the risk of health uh, and in the environment. One environmental risk investigated at Utilito, road salt pollution. These de-icing salts, when they're applied to roads, they eventually wash into freshwater ecosystems, increasing the salinity. Another risk, invasive carp, fish not welcome in the Great Lakes. So grass carp are the only one of the four invasive carp species that are currently present in the Great Lakes, and they are in fact reproducing in Lake Erie. Um, they are known to spawn in the Maumee and the Sandusky River and that is where they go, we go to try and remove them. And the idea is to do that now while they are relatively rare. So we, we're, we're trying to hunt for them now before they become abundant. We don't want you know, invasive carp like they have in the Mississippi River. In water chemistry, researchers are targeting pollutants like fracking wastewater and PFAS, known as forever chemicals, because they do not degrade easily. These uh, fluorinated chemicals, they come from the manufacturing industry, especially from any type of Teflon material. They are in fabrics, they are in nonstick cookware. So um, they have been broadly used in the past five decades and now they are contaminating the environment. Global sea levels have risen over the last decade, prompting a national effort to forecast the future. Utilito leads the Great Lakes portion of the U.S. Department of Energy's $20 million project called COMPASS to test the resiliency of coastal systems. Along Lake Erie shorelines and within ghost forests, Utilito scientists and students are examining vegetation, soil, and hydrology. And we're using all this information that we're collecting to develop new and improved ecosystem models that will help us predict how these systems will function under climate conditions that we've never seen before. Across all these areas of research, the public impact of Utilito's work is always front and center. Congratulations to the University of Toledo and its Water ta uh, Task Force in winning the APLU Impact Research Award. Uh, that is a big thing here in the city of Toledo and for the University of Toledo as well. I am an alumni of the University of Toledo, so I'm extremely proud of the university and what it's done.